This is a photo of a prominent businessman and athlete in early 20th century America, well known for his wealth and high status, enjoying a life of success and luxury. But his story is a chilling cautionary tale of the dangers of unchecked scientific innovation and medical deception. Ebenezer McBurney Byers, more commonly known as Eben Byers, was born on April 12, 1880. A graduate of Yale, he was renowned for his charm and popularity, earning him the nickname Foxy Grandpa due to his sophistication and success with women. Byers was also a skilled athlete and won the U.S. Amateur Golf Championship in 1906. As the son of a prominent entrepreneur, he eventually became chairman of his father's company, A.M. Byers Company, one of the largest steel companies in Pittsburgh. He had so much wealth that, despite the stock market crash, Byers managed to maintain his lavish lifestyle, owning homes in Pittsburgh, New York, Rhode Island, and South Carolina, along with horse racing stables in New York and England. Byers had everything going for him. However, in 1927, his life would take an unexpected turn. At 47, Byers experienced a life-changing accident. While traveling back from the annual Harvard-Yale football game, he fell from an upper berth on a train and injured his arm. The injury left him with chronic pain that persisted despite the efforts of his personal physicians and trainers. The constant discomfort began to affect his golf game and, according to some rumors, even his libido. To help relieve the pain, Byers' physiotherapist, Dr. Charles Clinton Moyer, recommended Radether, a popular tonic of the era that was advertised as a cure-all. Radether was claimed to relieve pain and boost energy, promises that appealed to Byers as he sought a way to restore his health and preserve his image. Byers followed his doctor's advice and began taking Radether. Initially, he followed the moderate dosage prescribed. However, he soon felt that it healed his arm and significantly improved his overall health, and so he began consuming it in larger quantities. His enthusiasm for Radether grew so intense that he reportedly started giving cases of the tonic to his girlfriends and even to his racehorses. From December 1927 onward, he averaged three bottles of Radether per day, maintaining this regimen for over two years. Over time, Byers began to experience some health issues. He lost weight, suffered from headaches, and endured excruciating pain in his jaw. He had been diagnosed with inflamed sinuses, but Byers knew something was terribly wrong when his teeth began to fall out and his jaw began to crumble. An x-ray was taken and sent to a radiologist who noted that the lesions on his jaw, along with the headaches and jaw pain reported by Byers, resembled the symptoms experienced by the Radium Girls, female factory workers who became ill after painting timepiece parts with glowing radium paint. When his illness was relatively minor, Byers remained convinced of Radether's benefits and continued to consume it, hoping it would alleviate his symptoms. In total, he ingested nearly 1,400 bottles of Radether. He stopped consuming Radether in late 1930, only after facing severe health complications, including significant weight loss and the falling off of his jaw. These all had resulted from radiation poisoning, as Radether is in fact radium dissolved in water. In 1898, Marie and Pierre Curie discovered radium, an element initially thought to have beneficial properties. Early researchers noted its ability to kill cells, which sparked public fascination with its claimed healing powers. As a radioactive element, radium became associated with radiant energy, leading many to believe it could rejuvenate the body. These beliefs fueled the marketing of radium-infused tonics that claimed to enhance health and treat various ailments, including cancer, hay fever, gout, and constipation. Pharmacists sold radioactive products, and radium clinics emerged for those who could afford them. With little public knowledge of radium's potential side effects, most remained convinced of its positive effects. Although some scientists, including the Curies, reported symptoms of radiation exposure, the long-term effects, such as cancer and chronic illnesses, were not thoroughly studied until later. 
It was only in the 1920s and 1930s that cases like the Radium Girls highlighted the dangers of radiation exposure. The truth is that radium, a radioactive element, emits radiation, primarily alpha particles, which do not penetrate deeply, but when ingested, accumulate in bones. This radiation damages the DNA of surrounding bone tissue and marrow, leading to cell dysfunction or death, and significantly increasing the risk of cancer. As a radium-based tonic, Radithor exposed the consumer to high doses of radiation, causing severe health problems, including bone cancer, anemia, and tissue necrosis. In September 1931, Federal Trade Commission attorney Robert Heiner Wynn visited Byers at his luxurious home in Southampton, Long Island, to interview him about his experiences. Following his visit, Wynn wrote an article for Time magazine, detailing Byers's condition as follows. Young in years and mentally alert, he could hardly speak. His head was swathed in bandages. He had undergone two successful jaw operations and his whole upper jaw, excepting two front teeth, and most of his lower jaw had been removed. All the remaining bone tissue of his body was slowly disintegrating, and holes were actually forming in his skull. Eben Byers passed away at 7.30 a.m. on Thursday, March 31, 1932, at the age of 51, in Doctors Hospital in New York City. When Byers died, his emaciated body would have been barely recognizable to friends who remembered him as a robust athlete and ladies' man. He weighed just 92 pounds. His once youthful and handsome face had been disfigured by a series of desperate surgeries that removed most of his jaw and part of his skull in an effort to stop the destruction of his bones. Additionally, his bone marrow and kidneys had failed, giving his skin a sallow and ghastly appearance. The New York Times reported the preliminary results of his autopsy with a headline that read, Eben M. Byers dies of radium poison. Byers's autopsy revealed that he had only six teeth remaining, and both of his jaws were severely rotted. Additionally, his brain was found to be abscessed. Dr. Frederick Bonner Flynn of Columbia University calculated that there were 36 micrograms of radium distributed throughout his bones. With 10 micrograms being considered a fatal dose, this means that by the time he stopped taking Radithor, he had consumed a quantity of radium enough to kill three men. Radithor was patented by William Bailey, a Harvard dropout who falsely claimed to be a doctor. He was forced to leave Harvard after just three semesters due to mounting debt, but later asserted that he was a Harvard graduate, a claim that was untrue. Bailey was a fraud who frequently found himself in trouble with the law and profited from various short-lived business ventures. He created Radithor by dissolving high concentrations of radium-226 and radium-228 isotopes in distilled water, claiming it could cure numerous ailments, including impotence, by stimulating the endocrine system. Bailey marketed Radithor as a cure for the living dead and offered physicians a 17% commission on every dose prescribed. Bailey defended his actions by stating that he sold Radithor only on doctor's prescriptions. Dr. Charles Clinton Moyer, who prescribed Radithor for buyers, insisted that it was not harmful. Based on a United Press report in April 2, 1932, Moyer stated, I never had a death among my patients for radium treatment. I have taken as much or more radium water of the same kind Mr. Byers took and I am 51 years old, active and healthy. I believe that radium water has a definite place in the treatment of certain diseases and I prescribe when I deem it necessary. He further declared that he knew that Byers had died from a combination of blood diseases which had induced gout. At the time of Eben Byers' death in the early 1930s, regulations concerning medical and consumer products were far less stringent, and the health risks associated with radiation were not yet fully understood. Radithor was sold before the enactment of the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act of 1938, which granted the Food and Drug Administration or FDA enhanced authority to regulate drugs and medical claims. 
In the absence of specific regulations, the Federal Trade Commission, also known as FTC, could only issue cease and desist orders against false advertising, but it lacked the power to impose criminal penalties on William Bailey or Charles Moyer. While Bailey and Moyer did not face criminal charges, Byers's highly publicized death drew increased scrutiny from both the FTC and the FDA which then led to stronger regulations against unsafe products and misleading health claims. Although it may provide only a little comfort to Byers, his death prompted the inclusion of radioactive substances under the FDA's supervision. The combination of Byers's tragic death and the growing evidence of the dangers associated with radium-containing products resulted in heightened scrutiny and regulation of radioactive substances. This resulted in the closure of Bailey Radium Laboratories and the withdrawal of Radether from the market in 1932. With the implementation of new regulations, the radioactive patent medicine industry effectively collapsed almost overnight. While the FDA ultimately shut down Bailey's business, the damage had already been done. The exact number of people who perished as a result of Radether is unknown, but he sold approximately 400,000 bottles of the tonic, and as mentioned priorly, with Byers himself purchasing 1,400 of those. Throughout the controversy, Bailey denied any connection between Radether and Byers' death, insisting that his healing tonic was safe. He even claimed to have consumed more Radether than Byers, using his own health as supposed evidence of its safety. Ironically, in 1949, Bailey succumbed to bladder cancer at the age of 64. When his body was exhumed in 1969, two decades after his death, medical researchers found that his remains were still emitting radiation. His corpse was described as still hot upon being unearthed, serving as a haunting testament to the very dangers he had consistently denied. Prior to the exhumation of Bailey's body, scientists also exhumed Byers's remains in 1965 to study the effects of radiation on human tissues, they found that he was still dangerously radioactive. Given that radium has a half-life of 1,600 years, it is unlikely that he will become significantly less hazardous anytime soon. After the exhumation, Byers was returned to his lead-lined coffin at the Byers Mausoleum in Pittsburgh's Allegheny Cemetery. This specially designed coffin is intended to absorb the radiation that will continue to emanate from his remains for centuries to come. Eben Byer's tragic end reveals how limited scientific understanding and a dose of misplaced faith in unproven remedies can turn a cure into a slow poison.